It's such a wonderful feeling when you catch up on every single thing on your to-do list and all you have left to do is start a new project. No other responsibilities. Okay, so I was not gonna start on this project until tomorrow, like bright and early, but I don't feel like mowing today, so here we go. Also, you might hear um, background noise in this video. What you doing? What you doing down there? Do we have a good nap? Did we wake up just in time for me to try to start filming? Okay. Okay, so today I am going to be working on my newest set of stays. Once I correct the fit issues with this one, I think that it's not going to fit me the same way, and so I think that I should make a new pair of stays before I invest any more time in making clothes to wear over them. Do we have no chill today? Are you gonna make it very difficult to film? What do I want to change and evolve with this design? First off the fit, major issues with the fit because this one I used a um, extant pattern for. I did not draft it to my own measurements and I just have lost faith in making stays that way. They just never seem to fit right. This is two layers of linen. I think I can get it mostly down to a single layer. I'll probably have to do two layers for the very front where I'm going to have extra boning and then I might need to do two layers for the very back, but I think for the middle section, I can get away with just a single layer of linen, which will be good because this is meant to be a pair of summer stays. These boning channels right here, since it's so thin, I'm having problems with the boning starting to wear through. Oh, you can see it really good with that one. <laughs> um, so what I'm going to try doing is I'm going to take my pattern and I'm going to do less boning, but more seams. And I'm going to bone every single seam so that the boning channels will be stronger and that's how I'm going to do it with only one layer because I can just bone it inside the channel. I might try curving it out at the base of each seam and see if I can completely eliminate the tabs because I have only bound tabs twice and I'm already tired of it. So <laughs> that's what we're going to try with the design here. I think I'm going to do a lot of voiceover for this video. I've done several patterning and stay making videos at this point that were more blog format, so I think it'll be useful to cap that off with a voiceover format video so you can get more details and explanations as I go. So to make a pattern, I started by drafting a new curve. I tweaked the measurements again as I'm finding that the 18th century silhouette tends to exaggerate my figure, and I keep having to add to the bust and subtract from the waist. I did a whole video on this curved shape and how and why to make one as your base for any 18th century pattern, and if you haven't seen it, I definitely recommend it as a patterning prerequisite. Once I had the fan with the shortened back waist, I traced it onto fresh paper and began to freehand the upper and lower edge of the stays. I like to fold the curve in half to find the rough center side. Larger busted women have told me that it works better if they adjust the line slightly back. However, there is no exact center side seam, and I only use this line for approximating where to start the underarm curve, so it's not a huge deal. I moved the center back line in by an inch, so that there will end up being a two inch gap in the back of the stays. Then I freehanded the front and back upper edge real roughly, knowing I'll have plenty of chances to adjust it later. Then I added a few seams, using them to guesstimate the bottom line of the stays. Then I added more seams to form the extra boning channels. Then I cut it out, slitting the portion of each seam below the waist so that it can flare out naturally when I try it on. Yeah, I'm thinking not too bad. I'm sorry, did I wake you from your nap? This is a little bit further over, but I think that's okay. I might drop it a little bit though. I think that it comes up a little high. Um, same with this front edge. But I feel like this edge right here comes up too high. I think it needs to swoop down slightly more. I think that will really help get rid of the harsh line. Um, so yeah, I think I need to just trim the neckline away a little bit. And then in the back, kind of the same thing. I think it just kind of comes up a bit high. I have started wearing, because it's getting warmer out and I want to wear it, but I don't want to be hot. Um, quit it. You're gonna get picked up. Come here, little birdie. Come here. Well, hello there. Hello there. Look at your beautiful wings. Hi there, good shoulder chicken. Good little shoulder chicken. Okay. Um, so yeah, I'm thinking I can eliminate the tabs, so I'm going to cut this out and I'm going to kind of leave a wide, you know, a bit of excess at the side of each tab so that when I stitch it together, I can start to angle the tabs in on an individual basis and then I can pinch in at the waist because that does, that is a thing 
these are like, these are not nearly as tight as they could be at the waist. They could be much tighter and in a way I think they would be more comfortable if they were tighter because I think that it would just distribute everything a little bit better. Chirpy chirpy. Chirpy chirpy. Hi. I'm gonna get started with, uh, I guess, cutting out a first mock-up. This is like a really loose pattern. Like, we're just slapping lines on there. We'll see how it ends up. Hi, hi baby. Then I cut a mock-up out of stiff cotton canvas. As discussed, I cut plenty of extra along the lower portion of each piece so that I could sew it with an overly generous amount of hip flare, then taper it in later. I also had an idea, and I cut the center back pieces on a fold, with exactly two inches between them. This way I can adjust the fit with the exact finished shape in mind, though I will still have the flexibility of the lacing cord on the final piece. Then, with all of the pieces cut out, I started pinning and sewing them together, using the traced pattern edge to line up the seams. To try it on, I added my mock-up zipper, which I use on all of my mock-ups, then just rip it out and save it between each. At first, the fit was really bad. Very tight and way too high. But then I realized that I just cut the straps way too short. So the next morning I lengthened them and surprise, the fit was much better. I did decide that the angles of some of the seams were off, primarily the first seams. It cut way too close to the bust. Since the front piece will be the most reinforced, I wanted it to stretch wide enough to cover the entire bust for maximum support. So I redrew those seams on the pattern, then ripped those pieces off of the mock-up, cutting out and adding in a new front. Then it was still quite loose, primarily just under the bust. But remember, that section will be padded out with my crescent-shaped cups, as made and theorized about in this video. But the seams were all too loose, especially in the waist. So there was going to be a lot of work to do tapering those seams in one at a time. With a thinner fabric, I might have just pinched and pinned each seam, but with a canvas, I mostly pinched it in, sometimes marking it with a sharpie, sometimes just remembering about where and how much I pinched it. I drew a new curve, sewed it, replicated it on the opposing side, then tried it on again. I did this about a million times, adjusting one seam at a time, pinching it wherever it felt loose, and widening it whenever I pinched it too far and it started cutting into my ribs. I know you feel very accomplished right now, but all this means is that I'm gonna have to put the lid on the box now. Okay, this is what we are looking at right now, and you know, I think I'm about happy. The whole flaring it out thing seems to be working pretty well. One of the reasons I wanna try and get rid of tabs is because it's getting warmer out and I have now one summer dress, and so I've been experimenting with the layers I wear underneath that dress, and I have found that I am comfortable wearing it without a shift underneath. In fact, I am more comfortable without the shift underneath because it just kind of reduces some of the bulk and layers, and I don't sweat much, and I made that pair of stays to be washable so it works fine. However, I do still need to wear a petticoat only because of the tabs. They, they, they stick out, they show through the single skirt layer and I need the petticoat to diffuse that. So if I can get rid of tabs, I might be able to get to the point where I could just wear a pair of summer stays and a dress. That's it. I feel like that would be very comfortable in the summer. So that's the goal we're reaching for. So I continued adjusting the fit until it was right at the limit of how tight I could comfortably tolerate, keeping in mind three things. One, there will be flexibility in the lace-up section. Two, this is thick canvas and I'm planning to use a lighter linen, which will have a tiny bit of stretch. And three, corsets and stays in my experience tend to stretch out just slightly as you break them in. So going extra tight here is not necessarily signing myself up for future discomfort. Then I decided somewhere along the line that I had trimmed the neckline slightly lower than I wanted, and also the bottom edge of the flares needed evening out. So I took one half of the mock-up and flattened the seams with a quick top stitching. Then I took scrap fabric and stitched it to the top edge, using it to tweak the neckline hopefully a final time. I did the same with the bottom edge, smoothing out all of those jagged flares. Then I began labeling the panels and splitting them apart. I traced them out on fresh paper, and the pattern was ready to go. Minus the shoulder straps, but I came back to that later and I ended up changing my mind a few times anyways. Cutting out was fairly straightforward. I used the seam tracing method, and most of this corset will only be a single layer of medium weight linen. I also have a dense herringbone linen from Burnley Trowbridge. For these stays, I used it for the backing layer of the center front panel, the center back panel, and the straps, though I ended up replacing those exact straps later on. To begin assembly, I started with the zipper. Actually, I did it all out of order, but I'm trying to artificially order it to make it easier for you to understand. So let's pretend I started with the zipper. I did this by inverting it between the two layers of the front panel, 
stitching it, and then flipping those layers back right side out. Then I stitched around the center back panel to baste these layers together. Then I started with all of the side seams. It turned out labeling the panels was non-optional. I pinned and stitched them just like I did with the mock-up, lining up the blue seam allowances. I sewed all the way to the edges because I might end up trimming the top and bottom edge slightly differently when I go to bind them. At least I wanted to leave that option open to myself. So yes, a lot of pinning and sewing later and the stays were sort of assembled. I left off the front panel for now. It needs boning channels and those will be easier to sew first. To make these boning channels, I first made the center front channel along each side of the zipper. I use heavier boning in this channel, so I made it a bit wider. Then I used the method I usually go with. I marked the outermost channel, then measured across the top, spacing each channel one and a quarter inch apart. I marked the channels one by one, angling them towards the peak of the stays. I did decide to eliminate the bust rail. I usually have made it, but it is a lot of extra work and it does decrease wearability slightly because the stays want to gape forward so much when I move my arms. So we're trying stays without the rail this time. Then I could attach the front panels to the rest of the stays. Now it's all in one piece. Next, I decided to work on the center back panels so that I could get the eyelets in and start doing fittings. First, I folded over the back along the blue line. I stitched a boning channel along this fold slightly over a quarter of an inch. Then I trimmed the excess down to fit inside the seam. Then, one question I've been pondering with this project is how to handle clipping the curves. They need clipped, but if I just clip them in, it will weaken the seam and I'm afraid the boning will show through and there will be fraying. So what I decided to do was clip the curves along one side of the seams, then flip it and cut the other side, staggering the clips. This won't perfectly solve the problem, but I think it will help a lot. Then I double folded the seam allowance, turning it to the back and pinning it down. I sewed it, making sure I trapped the folded edge of the back inside the seam. It gapes a bit at the bottom, but it's a selvage edge, so maybe I'll go back later and whip stitch it to the herringbone layer. Now I can do my eyelets. I determined the placement with my paper folding trick marking every fold with pins, and then removing certain pins to stagger them. Then I spent a morning sitting on my table, sewing the eyelets, and rambling at my camera about birds. Okay, so this is what it's looking like right now, and um, here are a few thoughts. I was going to make the straps removable, and I think that I'm not going to do that. What I might do instead is sew them onto the front and then have them lace onto the back. I think that did occasionally happen historically, I just haven't seen it very much. Um, so I think that's what I'm going to do with the straps, and then as far as the fit goes, it's hard to tell. I have no boning in it right now, and I might not have it laced tightly enough, um, but it doesn't feel tight enough. I think I'm going to bone the front of it, and then bone the back channels that I've already sewn. Okay, so a quick word about boning. In these stays, I used um, four millimeter synthetic whalebone for the entire thing, except for just this front channel, I used six millimeter. Now, to make these stays, um, I'm going to use the six millimeter in the front again, and I have just barely enough left to do that. I'm going to use four millimeter for the like front panels, and then maybe the back, but for these side panels, the only downside with the synthetic whalebone is when it's curving around your body, the whalebone can't really curve with it. So like even you can see this piece is all like twisted inside the channel. So it doesn't lay very flat when it's trying to curve around your body. So for the side channels, I'm going to use the stainless steel because it is much better at curving and twisting around a shape. Yep. Okay. Okay, so the front panel and the back panels are boned now, and let's see. Okay, the thing with historical corsets and stays, they could be strapless because they were a lot more structured and rigid. I'm purposely making these to be very lightweight and comfortable, but that just means that they're not structured and supportive enough to really get away with not wearing straps. So yes, it definitely needs straps. It definitely is going to need the um, crescent moon-shaped cups. I think I'm going to do the next back channel because I want that channel to be taped down so that I can go ahead and add the straps and figure out the fit a bit better. I stitched that channel basically the same as the last channel. All of the channels will be done the same from here. I trimmed the selvage down to about 5 eighths of an inch. I clipped the curves in a staggered fashion and then I turned and pressed the seams, machine stitching them down. I see little chickens. They're sitting up on the ledge looking out the window. Oh, one just flapped down. <laughs> hey, as long as they're not running across the floor, we're fine. 
back and did the straps. I cut two new straps, much longer and wider than I think I'll end up needing. Then I pinned them down and stitched them with inverted seams. So when I folded them right, they covered all of the selvages. Then I decided to move the top edge of the eyelets down, which meant that I needed to stitch a new top eyelet. That way I could cut the neckline of the stays lower, curving up a peak where I'll tie on the straps. Okay, so with straps, it has already improved the fit a ton. Um, a few things I have noticed. Uh, one, so this seam back here, I have not yet boned, but if you can see how curved it is, that's why I'm going to use spiral steel because there is just no way that any plastic boning would ever lay flat. It would always have a hard ridge where it was trying to curve around my body. Yeah, I'm gonna do some tucking out of the waist, but I think I have enough that I can at least do, maybe I'll do this next one up front because I don't think I'm going to bring that part in, but this part, there's definitely some extra squish I could sacrifice. Um, and then there was one more thing. Oh, 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 a waist tape. Okay, yeah, because of the way linen stretches out, I think I'm going to add a waist tape in somewhere at the middle, which is very common in Victorian corsets, single layer corsets. So yeah, that's the current plan. Yes, yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do this next center front seam and then I'm going to bone one, two, three channels on each side, and then we will see where we're at. Okay, the fit continues to improve with every channel of boning I add, which is logical. Um, so I'm down to three in the center side of each half. If you can see the little blue markings, that is literally all of the room that my waist has to squish. This marks my hip bone, this marks the base of my ribs. So this part I'm going to focus more on um, angling in a little bit more. Okay, well, um, I did a little bit more nipping and tucking in at the waist and eh, it's fine. Um, but I feel like I've reached the point where it's just, it's a single layer of linen. It is always going to want to try and stretch. So at this point, I'm kind of wasting my time and it's really gonna come down to the waist tape to keep it actually where I want it but also like I'm running out of space between these seams. If I nip these in anymore, I'm not gonna have room for my uh, boning channels. Um, but you know what? As it is, it doesn't look bad. So yeah, we're gonna go with it. Um, yeah, so finish off the last boning channels, get the boning in them, and then I will be ready for the binding, which should be here within a couple of hours, I would think. So, hey, okay. When do I hit go? It's already going. Are they doing much? Well, they're like discovering their new. They don't even know what grass is yet, okay? This is a little traumatic. They'll probably huddle together until they figure out grass is a good thing. Yeah. What's going on in there, huh? What's happening, little chicks? Is it a brave new world we're finding today, huh? Yeah, this is your destiny. Your density. Come along. Look at how pretty Those are like eagle are. feathers or something. Isn't I mean, that I'm not, not eagles, but I mean, isn't that awesome? They're so pretty. That's awesome. And it's just a chicken. We thought chickens could be so cool and so diverse. Brave new world. Oh, runaway bird. Get that bird. <laughs> Quick, get it. Get it. Hit me, little chicken. Two for the price of one right there. These two babies. Oh, they're so small. How come they're so small? They're like a week younger. Oh, uh, okay. Roughly. Yeah, they probably won't it's be like, able to. It's like, yo, bro, when was your uh, egg laid? Oh, three days ago. Well, hatched, not played. Yeah. Thank you very much. Then it was time to stop stalling and finish the boning channels. Okay, gotta be careful here. We're getting awful close to demonetization bait. Um, all right, so everything is boned and it is looking pretty darn good. Um, it feels really comfortable. I am not going to make crescent cups from this one. I've actually 
uh, borrowed the ones from my previous pair of stays that I will be just adding little tie-ins so that they stay in. Um, and then if I need to make a secondary pair later, I will, but I probably won't need to. I think I have a strategy figured out for how I'm going to do the waist tape because it's not as simple as just putting it on levelly. So, but I think I have an idea. So yes, I'll catch you up later. Look, they're all napping in the sun. It's so cute. Oh my gosh. And then I cut a waist tape out of some sturdy Dutch linen tape. At first I made it too tight and slightly uneven between the two sides. I was still chasing the elusive waist reduction goal of one inch, but it just wasn't comfortable and I ended up ripping it out and restitching it three times before I was satisfied. And I might still take it out later. I think it affects the comfort by like 3%. It's not much, but I sewed it on top, so if I decide to take it out later, it'll be a quick job. And finally, I was down to binding. I started by sketching out the neckline adjustments I still wanted to make, now that I saw what the final fit was like. Then I machine based it along this line, to keep it all together better while I worked on the binding. Then I could cut it out and try it on one last time before committing to the binding. Okay, well, I officially can no longer try it on without a shift beneath, but... I think I like this neckline. I think I like the slope because my last one I made very squared off, but then that combined with the bust rail meant that it was just very, very gapy. I like the slope. I think it's very flattering. I think it is as supportive as I need, and I think it will be pretty discreet and subtle beneath clothes. I like the back too. Ain't perfect, but it'll work. Um, these ended up wider than I need. I might kind of try tapering them in a bit more like with top stitching. I, it, cause I already did the boning channel, so it's not that simple to fix anymore. I just want to keep the hip line as slim as possible. That was part of the point of making this. I wanted something that wouldn't show as badly through skirts as my previous stays. Um, but yeah, I really like this neckline. I think that looks good. To sew the binding, I marked a line a quarter of an inch from the edge I'd cut. Then I stitched the front of the binding tape down, lining it up with the markings. It was tricky going around the curves, and if you'd rather hand stitch that part, no shame to you. Then to bind the other side, I folded the stays and lined up the two sides, so that I could trace the neckline and replicate it evenly. Then, with the entire top edge bound, all that was left was the bottom. The edge still turned out a bit jaggedy, so I smoothed out the line while wearing them. I cut the edge pretty high. I want it to slope over my hips, but I don't want them to be long enough to impede my flexibility. Then, unfortunately, I had to trim all of the boning again, because I'd shifted the top and bottom edges too much and they were now uneven. It's a tiny bummer, not a big one. It just means that I wasted several inches of boning and a bunch of tips in a lot of time. But then I could stitch on the bottom edge binding. This time I just sewed it straight on and then trimmed the excess off after. This actually worked much better and it was faster. And we done, finally. Wow, that was a lot more time consuming than I was planning on it being. But you know what? I think I'm happy. So all it has left is to give it a bath to get rid of all the blue markings and then let it dry out overnight. And then tomorrow we're good to go. So let that cook for about 15 minutes and then line dry overnight. Oh, look at you all lined up. You're so cute. It's hard to do a review because I haven't had much chance to wear them for extended time periods yet. But so far, it's all positive. I'm still considering whether or not I want to keep the waist tape, and if I end up not liking the bulk of the knots at the strap backs, I might use a thinner cord and then just sew it down instead of tying it. The fit is by far the best I've done, and so far the flared hips seem to be working. I might have done them a little bit looser, but they're okay. It's not causing me a problem. They are fitted enough that I can wear them under even slim modern skirts without them showing through. And they don't seem to be hindering movement any. These actually seem to be more flexible than anything else I've made so far, though that might be a combination of better fit, more spiral steel, and then cutting the hips higher. I also quite like the neckline. It's just the right shape to funnel and position everything where I want it. It offers support, I don't have slippage, and it doesn't make that hard ridge that's so difficult to hide beneath modern clothing. If you're questioning the washability, I did use a strip of spiral steel as the bust rail in my sports bra stays, and those have been washed many times with nary an ill effect. So yes, everything is all good so far. I'll definitely do a more thorough review after I've worn them more and gotten them broken in, especially once the hot weather arrives. I'm not sure yet whether it was worthwhile to make it a single layer. I'll test it with the weather, but I don't think a single lightweight layer would have made that much difference, and it would have made the sewing process a lot easier. I really liked patterning with 
with the closed two inch segment in the back, I think it really improved the fit. Staggering the clips was also great. I've never thought of that before, but I can see it being useful for a lot more than just corsetry. I think that this patterning method would work just as well for more Victorian shaped corsets with a lower, more rounded bust. You would just have to change the seam placement and then taper in flares or add gussets. Of course, you could also use any number of professional patterns, but my body shape is somehow just unique enough that those always end up very uncomfortable for me, especially in the lower back, even after multiple mock-ups and alterations. So learning to pattern my own things just seemed like a better use of time. Plus, starting from that curve drafted to your exact shape, that really seems to make all the difference in how a final piece fits.